I am a big fan of the anime series Ori Twin Tails ni Narimasu, or as it is known in English, Gonna Be the Twin Tails. So unless you are new to this channel, you probably already know this. It is a fun, stupid show that takes many common tropes to absurd ends, while also doing just enough to keep surprising the viewer. Plus, it looks cool, has great music, making all the hype for the battles so much more fun. Plus, it even had some deep and inspirational themes if you looked far enough into it. But as much as I liked the show, one of my issues was that it was incomplete. Though the light novel exists here and is still ongoing, so that's what I want to talk to you about today, or at least the first volume of the light novel. There will be some minor spoilers for this uh, novel, and it adapted the first four episodes of the anime, though nothing major. Actually, I don't think I even put any spoilers in it. I don't know. Between the anime and the light novel, not much really changed regarding the plot. Soji still loves Twin Tails, Ultima Gill shows up to try to steal the love of Twin Tails from the world, so Tuarl gives Soji the tail gear to transform into what is basically a Twin Tailed magical girl, and then he or she, however you put it, protects the world with lots of fire. Yes, I know this sounds stupid, but rest assured, it is even more stupid than it sounds. The light novel is slower paced than the anime, with each chapter of the light novel taking me over half an hour to read, and it's faster to read something than to watch something, at least I think it is. So yeah, there's a lot of content here. This made it so that the things I liked about the show they did more with, but they also did more with the things I did not like about the show. For example, one of the things I liked was we were able to focus more on Soji's feelings about his love of Twin Tails. We clearly know how passionate he is about them from the anime, but in the light novel we see more of him wanting to be normal and wanting to fit in, but his passion for Twin Tails just won't let him. This conversation with him and Aika after school gives a good foundation for his character, which I feel like the show kind of glossed over. We also get more details of the characters like Aika's family teaching martial arts so both her and Soji are learning from them growing up, and this also ties into the fighting more and especially the various moves that Aika comes up with to use against Tuarl. I also liked how the light novel was able to do a bit more foreshadowing here with how they notably describe certain things in certain ways in ways that wouldn't really stand out as unusual, but were still carefully worded that way. The focused narration on Soji was nice to see since the story was mostly written in first person, so we get to see all his thoughts on the world and the events of the story. So like we see his passion for Twin Tails, but also his doubts and sometimes just his reaction to all the weird stuff happening around him. I also did like really seeing his disgust at how the world, or at least a lot of it, is treating Tail Red, how she's become this sort of idol and is all over the news and people doing creepy things involving her, which was then taken to an even more extreme during the battle against Fox Guildy. This was all in the anime to a degree, but not in the depth that we got here, which made it more powerful. I also liked how he got more details of how the tail gear armor worked instead of just working in whatever way was cool without really an explanation behind why or how. We also got more details about the world as a whole, which was just nice to see and learn about more how it worked. I also like the additional focus that Ika got when she was fighting off the army of minions in chapter 4. We got a bit of time to just focus on her and understand how she felt about all this, like how she felt about Soji, about Tuoro, and it was really just cool to see how she cared about everyone. Unfortunately, while the extra detail did allow us to flesh out a lot more, it also gave focus to the parts of the show that I did not like as much, which is mainly the constant back and forth between Ika and Tuoro. It seemed like every line outside of a fight was Toro making some kind of advance on Soji and then Aika stopping her with violence. This was mainly done for comedy and it was funny the first few times. This is a case where moderation I think would make the joke funnier. Like near the end of chapter 3, Toro is wanting to give Aika her tail gear so Aika can become tail blue. But while Toro is doing this, she's trying to get Aika to promise that she won't hurt Toro anymore. But here Aika instead just knocks Toro out, takes the tail gear for herself. And this was really funny, but I think it would have been funnier if we did not have all those other jokes that were basically the same thing before. There were also some issues I had with the writing itself, which I think is probably a lot because of the translation from Japanese to English because as good as the translator is, this was not made for an English speaking audience. There are times where it was hard to picture exactly what was going on or who was speaking. I also think that there's some wordplay that just didn't translate well, which is understandable and I don't want to bash the translator because, well, they put a lot of work into it and I'm glad they did. But going back to the good, 
My favorite thing about this volume, and even the story as a whole, is Soji's love for Twin Tails and what they represent, which the light novel gives more focus to than the anime. I've said before that Twin Tails is a deeper story than it's often given credit for, and Soji's love for Twin Tails is the key here. Because it represents how people love their passion so much, but as they grow up, the world seems to take that from them. There's a line in the prologue where Soji talks about how he wants to just love the things he loves, even if it is unpopular, and I love this message. I mean, that's what I'm doing here, making a video talking about how much I love something unpopular and weird. I'm not someone who cares about having a good taste. Like, I can appreciate the great philosophical, deep, critically good anime and all that, and sure, they are great. I like them, sometimes. I'm glad you like them. But really, it's these fun, stupid shows that I have the most fun with. And yeah, putting that aside, we also have Ultimate Gil here, who are stealing the passions from the world, and I really like the parallels here between Soji and the villains. I think one of my favorite things in storytelling is to draw parallels between characters, like Naruto is the master of this. And here we have Soji and the villains. They both love Twin Tails, but the way they are going after them is different. Or even like Soji's love of Twin Tails, and now the world's growing love of them. It's all just really interesting when you start to think about what this really means. We also see a lot of the comparisons between Soji and Dragility when they fight in Chapter 4, and they have a lot of respect for each other as lovers of Twin Tails and having a pure love for it as opposed to the more corrupted love of the others. I want to get into this more because I think there's so much the novel and the show is trying to say here that I just want to really go in depth here. But I feel like if I was going to do that, I should read the entire Light Novel series, but sadly only volumes 1, 5, and part of 6 have been translated. So let me know if you want me to cover volume 5, since that takes place after the anime, so it would be cool to talk about new content. I would like to do more than that, but it seems like the translations have really slowed and possibly stopped altogether, and well, it's not like I could just learn Japanese myself and translate it. Or could I? Bro. Mm. Yo.